Each one of us, the, the ammunition carrier, the gun, gunman, and every, we all had about six shells apiece on our shoulders, on our shoulders. But, but the way we landed in, I, then I water over our head, my head anyhow. But it's fortunate we had these here life what do you call it? They helped us get up, get up out of there. And the first thing I encountered was a wall of sand and gravel, mostly gravel, about eight foot high. And I made understand later on that any tanks that would come up to this gravel bank would be, would be able to make it because I could see when I looked up to my right, I could see about eight, seven or eight tanks that were stranded that, that couldn't make it up there. But that was our first protection. And when I got to the top of that, I looked over the wall and I could see this pillbox. This pillbox, anybody that went over that bank would open fire. And to me, I says, we need help. So as I said that, I saw a destroyer coming up the shoreline, the destroyer Texas. That thing leveled up with the coastline and fired three volleys It hit that pillbox right on a button. And that's when I told the fellas, now we better get out of here. Not knowing that the whole hillside was planted with personnel mines. Because as soon as we start going in, fellas were stepping on mines and God knows what happened to them. And, and we were fortunate that the climate, in a couple of years, had shown the detonators of these, exposed them which gave us the break where we could step over them. But we lost a lot of men that did, did going up that hillside. But we eventually, and I, I'll swear that we were stuck on that hillside for at least two hours. We got on top and uh, I could see all kind of signs up there. Beware, mining, mining in Germany. And as we walked inland, there was a soldier, first division soldier. He was prone position, prone. And he looked at me, he says, you fellas are either nuts or you're brave. I says, we're either what, I would say we're nuts. But we advanced forward. We went over a, a deep ravine when we got on top of the deep ravine, I could see a church steeple. So, and, and I still say, when 115 landed about 100 yards to the left, the Germans started to retreat. I, it's my opinion, because they were afraid of probably getting surrounded with, with 115 coming to their left. Well, anyhow, when we got on top of that ravine, uh, the, the Germans did retreat, and they headed for the town of Saint Laurent, where they put up a second line of defense. I would say it was about a quarter of a mile, maybe half a mile from the beach. So when we got to the town, I mean, it, I, it was around five o'clock in the afternoon. And I would say we landed about eight o'clock in the morning. So I, the the weapons platoon, the, the you know, riflemen had already gone past these houses. Well, we were not, we, right there to the rear of these houses where we started to rest. So I sat down and I had a hedgerow behind me a big tree to the left of me, 
sat down to my all of my, all I can tell you is my legs were short. And uh, someone fired a shot and caught me in the left foot and the right leg. That's the only thing I would have shown. And uh, I jumped over the hedgeway, hedgerow and my fellows took off my shoes and everything. They just they helped me get you know with band aids and stuff. And then they later took me into a house where there was already quite a few soldiers already injured. They were this medic. It wasn't a doctor, just a medic. He was taking care of them. And uh, he he kind of was had tears in his eyes. And I said, what's the matter? He says, I'm out of, I'm out of, uh, the, uh, what do I call that? It's like penicillin powder. Uh, Sulfur. Sulfamanilamide. Sulfamanilamide. And I says, you don't do me a favor. See, before I left left England, I had one of the medics give me some of this sulfamalilamide. He said, sure, I'll give you some. He gave me scissor, band-aids, and I sewed them on the side of my pack, but I wrapped it, but I wrapped them in plastic because I knew we were going to be hitting the beach. And I sewed it behind me, and I says, get somebody to go get my pack. And I must have had at least a half a pound of that salt from a little mind. And I gave it to him. And how he had a smile on his face. And uh, that relieved him a little bit. But then... Uh, he, he, I don't know why he told me of all the ones that were wounded in there, the stretcher bearers came up. And he says, take them out. So they took me out, and they set me behind one of the houses, and they took somebody else down to back down the beach. And it, 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 here, all the firing bullets and stuff, artillery, quit, you know, hit the beach. So they made a hospital ship out of an LST. They must have already had that planned because there was all kind of beds in there and everything. And that they, the, one of the bulldozers had made a big hole in the side of that hillside where the doctors were. They would check you out and, it tell you whether you're going on the LST or your wounds weren't that bad. But they sent me on the LST. And I was there for eight days with, about, with maybe two or three hundred other wounded. And uh, after that, the, the, the ship was sent to England with all these wounded. Not knowing it, not having that treatment for just that one time, I, gangrene had set in my foot. And uh, they, the British doctors had taken care of it, they cleaned it. But then after a day or two, they sent us to another place where it was uh, British barracks, but it, they made a hospital ship out of it. And uh, that's where they found out that I had gangrene. And I was hospitalized for about five months because of that. And uh, after five months, they were going to send me non-combatant. And I pleaded with them, please, send me back to my original company. They says, you'll never make it. And I says, please. They finally gave the permission for me to go back to my company. Well, I got as far as Liege, Belgium, and uh, waiting to. From there, I, I they would ship us. There were several other ones going back, but I. But the Germans had that was uh, during the Battle of the Bulge 
happened just as I got to Lee Age. I could hear the artillery shells where the Germans had landed some paratroopers in a railroad yard in Lee Age. So the, the, uh, while we were waiting to go back, the uh, lieutenant or captain, whoever it was, says we got to form p patrols and see if we can locate those paratroopers. But truthfully, after about six or seven miles, we did run across two of them. But we had no ammunition. They told us to fix bayonets. And the sergeant in charge says, what do you guys want to do? He said, what would you do against automatics? He said, well, about face. So we went back. And uh, my foot just folded up like a balloon. I went to the medic the following morning. He looked at it and he says, who the devil sent you here? I says, look, please, I volunteered. But it, I guess it just didn't work. So he sent me back to France. France, for the French hospital in France. They looked at us and said, we can't do anything with you right now. We got too many casualties. So from there, they sent me back to England. And from England, they didn't want to do anything either, so they shipped me back to the United States. That's about, that's, that's about my own story.